Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video we're going to pick up from where we left off in 12b, where we talked and answered some questions on why we did things a certain way. And in this video we're going to add a second slider so that when the data is sent to the Arduino we have to interpret which slider is sending the data. We're going to start in the Nection. The first thing we have to do is add a second slider. We're going to give it pretty much the same specifications as this slider. So it's 380 by 100. And then the these values are 50 and 70. So they're pretty much identical sliders now. And then we have to do some changes though because instead of having one variable and one timer, we're going to have three variables. So I'm going to add two more variables. We're going to give them more specific names now. I'm going to call the first one and just call it the value, which is what the slider reads. The other one we're going to call the slider to define which slider we're actually talking about. And this has to be a string. They all need to be strings for what we're doing. This is going to be what we want to send. So. We're going to refer to this third one as data to send. So these are our variables. And in the past, the timer did quite a bit of function, but it's not going to do as much this time. In HO, we're still going to want to enable the timer, but in this case, we want to give it a name. We want to send the slider, variable slider.text. We're going to set it equal to bill. We're going to call the top slider bill. And the reason I'm doing this is just to show you you can refer to these things as anything you want because you're sending the data to the Arduino and the Arduino is just going to interpret the data however it, it needs. Now in this one though we want to go ahead and disable it on release. We're going to do something a little bit different. On the move Every time it moves, we're going to set a variable. We're still not going to send the data up except for on that quarter second, but I want to go ahead and load the variable every time we make a movement on the bar. So we're going to take this slider, ho.val, and we're going to set it to the value variable. And we're going to make it a static. We're going to set it to be six characters wide. And now we have to do the same thing on H1. The touch release is identical to. Now the press is going to be different. And we're going to send Stan. So the top bar is named Bill, the second bar is named Stan. You will notice that I'm keeping them the same number of characters, so they're each four characters. That's, that is somewhat important. It makes life easier if you keep everything the same number. So now we need to alter this because we're not going to create, we're not going to add Bill here. Well, we are, but we're going to do it a little bit different way. We're not going to do any of this conversion anymore because we do that as we move the slider. But we're going to change this first value to be data to send. Dot txt is now going to be equal to the slider plus the value. So what we're going to be sending is we're going to be sending Stan or Bill plus the value. And in this case it will go in the correct order because we have three different variables and since we're going to assign it one at a time it works out quite well. 
but here we can't, there is no variable VA0 anymore. So now we're just going to print the data to send.txt. And I believe that's it. So we're going to compile this. And we got an error. Oh, data to send, I didn't make it a string. Oh, I have a, and since I copied it, I have it again. So this should work um, even in debug mode, even though we don't have the Arduino configured yet. So let's go ahead and debug it before we um, upload it. Now if we look at the simulator down here, we'll switch it over to a string so we can see it. This should say stand, and it should be giving us a value. It's always 50, so we're going to have to look at that. And then this changes. I'm betting I'm sending the value of H0 instead of H1 when I did my copy and paste. But you can see that the value does change for the top one. The, if I do it on the bottom one and you see Stan and you see 97, then you'll know that that's what I did. So we'll close out of here. This is where the debug comes in handy. We'll go back to this one on move. And yeah, see I have H0. So, so I'm going to upload this to the display. Because I know the Arduino code is left um, from where we left off. We were using 13, which was the internal LED to flash. I did have that hooked up to an external LED too. But in this case, I only have two LEDs that are externally hooked up. So you're not really going to get to see 13 flash. But I don't think it should matter for this video. We're going to add 11 as our other output. We're using a Mega. You'll want to check your device to see if the pins that you're using can support pulse width modulation. And then really everything else in here stays the same. We have our timer um, to make the LED flash, which is right here. And what it does is it, every whatever the interval is, it only does this during that interval. Otherwise it skips it and continues to do this other code. And here's where if there's data available, if serial 2, we're using serial 2 on this instead of serial 1. Um, that way I could use the serial port to show you data on the screen if needed. And once again, that comes in handy with the Mega. But what we do is we establish a character and a string. We collect one character at a time over the serial port, and we add it to this to the data from display, um, string, or array. We allow 30 milliseconds for all the data to come in. And then while there's data available, while that string is being sent, we add it to the data display string. And then down here, we were printing it or writing it here. Because all we were collecting was a value and we were writing it directly. Now here's where the changes come in. We'll have to make, we're gonna have to adjust this area right here so that we can tell Stan or Bill or what's coming in. And what we're going to do, we're gonna go ahead and print it out just like we were in the past but we're going to use an if statement. So if the data from display, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the substring, the first four characters of the string. And if they say Bill, then we're going to execute what is in between these curly brackets right here. These will be the two lines that we're going to execute. We're going to go ahead and print out the data, just in case I have something wrong here. But we're going to analog write, and once again, we're going to take that data from display, that whole string that was collected, and just like we separated out the first four to determine if it was Bill or Stan, in this case, if it's Bill, we're going to analog write to pin 11, but we're going to take the last six characters. This might have to be a 10 instead of an 11. I'm not 100% sure 
Um, I didn't have time to test this, so I'll be doing this along with you on this example. And then if it isn't Bill, we don't really have to check for Stan. What we're going to do is we're going to analog right. We'll just delete this. Else, if it's not Bill, then we're assuming it's Stan, and we're going to write to pin 12 and the last six characters, characters 4 through 10. We're also going to print this out. Like I said, we're going to print it out for two reasons. One is just to show you some things, and the other thing is to make sure we got it correct. Because if it does strip off a, a byte, then it's going to change 40 to 4, and we won't get a very good result. I'm going to go, oh, we have to change this too because this interval, well, actually, I'm just going to comment this out. Since we can't see it anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. But what you would have to do is, since we're the data from display, you'd have to do the same substring in here so that it's correct when it comes back up and it does a comparison. We're going to compile this. And I have an error. Oh, a colon instead of a semicolon. Okay, we're good. So let's, it's a mega and it's on port six. Everything looks good. I'm gonna upload it now. Okay, so the upload seems to have worked. There was one thing I forgot to explain because I did a cut and paste. In this one, I'm showing, if it's Bill, I'm showing the data as if it came in. So it's the full string. It should be six characters. If it's Stan, I change it, I take that display, I turn it into an int, but then in order to print it, I have to change it back into a string. So I should be stripping off the, the zeros. So I do have a camera set up that I can show you, but at first I'm just gonna move the sliders and we should see, I'm gonna move the top one first so you should see Bill should show up here. And we have it exactly what we would expect. We have the full thing is Bill and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're showing the six characters. And now if I do the bottom one, we should see Stan, but we should only see two characters. We should see Stan and the whole thing up there, but then we should just see the two characters below. And that's what we're getting. So, so far so good. We've, we're sending the data from the Nexion to the Arduino. The Arduino is taking the data it's splitting it out just like we, we would expect. And now we'll see if, we, um, see if we're brightening and dimming the LEDs. So here's my screen. Uh, I've got two LEDs and two sliders. I'm actually not sure which one goes to which LED. You can see the light flashing back here, so I should have, uh, I could go back and adjust that, but I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. So here's, here we go. See that that one is getting brighter and dimmer. Same thing should happen. It's not brighter, but it's dimmer. And it got dimmer. So we're able to determine just by using substrings and sending different data back and forth, we're able to dim and brighten the LEDs. So as you can see, um, the only difference is, is you have to know the format of the data as it comes in. And in this case, we went ahead and set our descriptor to four characters. And we set the data itself that we're sending back to six. Now in this case, we only needed three. But if you had a bigger project where you're sending lots of different numbers back, you just base that on your largest number that you're sending back. Let's say we wanted one slider to be 1024 and the other one to be 0 to 100. Well, you'd want to send at least four digits back because you can always rip off that extra digit. I hope that this helps you um, establish that you don't have to use the Nexion.h library for some projects. Really, you don't need it for any projects. I prefer not to use it. It seems kind of bloated and you can get the same functionality out of it. But we're going we're gonna to look at get requests next where we send a request from the Arduino to the Nexion, and then the Nexion will respond to that. 
and then you'll have to you'll have to do a similar kind of thing where we'll have to separate out the strings because when you do a get request the nection sends back the data in the way it wants to and you don't really have any control over how it comes back well that's about it for this video if you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel thanks for watching